The Lightning Paladin came as quite a shock. With its ability to kill enemies off of the screen, heal directly through two spells with smite and healing hands, face tank damage with easily capped resists and very high armor, all while holding a single button, it's both fun and capable of pushing higher corruption. It's also one of the best aesthetically looking characters that I've seen in the game so far, at least in my opinion. This is a caster build, and we're actually spamming smite over and over. Whenever you directly cast smite, you'll also be casting healing hands. This will cost a portion of the mana cost, however, will then reduce the cost of healing hands all the way to zero. So you can just spam these abilities. On the right side of the tree, we'll actually convert the spell damage into fire. We'll gain additional spell damage for increased healing effectiveness, which we have plenty of access through the paladin tree. We'll also have cleric's wrath, which allows us to deal more damage per specialized Buff. The remaining three skills, Javelin, Sigils of Hope, and Holy Aura all have the buff tag. That means we're getting a ton of additional damage to that proc whenever it happens. We're able to scale the damage of Smite fairly well, and we'll even have the ability to transform this into an AoE ability. There's some really large nodes like Sacrifice, which allow us to do 250% increased damage at the cost of health. However, remember that our Smite is always casting healing hands, but this is only going to be around the target location, and we have a remedy to help heal ourselves all the time as well. By running Tome of Elements, we can leech health in addition to the direct healing that we have. This means that whether or not we're directly on top of the target or within that target area from Smite, we'll still be getting some healing for our character. The setup works perfect with the Amulet Devotion. This is going to allow you to have increased cast speed while you have missing mana, increase damage while you have missing mana, also get the increased lightning damage and lightning penetration, and don't forget that increased healing effectiveness is also a damage boost as well to our healing hands. With the relatively low mana cost that Smite has and a giant mana pool thanks to stacking attunement in order to buff our damage even more, how are we going to combat this? That's where Coldenverse Claim comes in. You're actually going to have 100% of your mana converted to Ward when you reach full mana, and this is going to convert your entire mana pool, give you some additional survivability, and then allow you to benefit even more from the increased cast speed and additional spell damage. You can see what a dramatic effect this has on Smite's damage. As you can see, the tooltip now is a little over 50,000, and all of a sudden when the mana pool drops, we're basically going to double our damage, and you can further this even more if you have a larger mana pool. Dedication is a great passive note if you're having difficulty sustaining your mana while spamming Smite. Smite only costs 8 mana with this setup, however, you may have earlier gear levels or you may have a lower level character. So by all means, feel free to spec into this. I'd recommend removing points from Holy Icon or Valor. Both of these are going to increase our health and increase healing effectiveness, which boosts the damage of our healing hands. However, the healing hands damage is fire, and we're mainly stacking lightning damage in this build. Any elemental damage sources we have will contribute to the benefit. However, lightning is going to be the priority. If you're playing this build above the level of the character that I'm showing you with, Sanctuary Guardian is a great choice for the remainder of your points. Increase your armor, which you saw is very high already, and additional spell damage with the shield which this character will use. Whatever final points you have can also be thrown back into Valor if you don't need any additional mana regeneration. So between those nodes, you should be able to max this character out. None of the items in this build are build defining, so you could play this without any uniques at all or as you get some of the pieces. I will mention that Culniverse Claim is likely to be worse than an exalted item that you may have until you also have Devotion. So without that combo, I wouldn't use Culniverse Claim, but for something appropriate in the exalted slot, elemental damage is a great choice, spell damage, high spell damage on the implicit, things like that would be great choices for this build. The reason this combo works so well is because it's going to deplete our mana source. Without that, you may just end up oom without the additional damage that the Devotion offers through those affixes, so keep that in mind. Look to place cast speed in as many places as possible. In this setup, I've got it on the gloves, getting it from the belt, getting it in the relic, and also keep in mind that you get increased cast speed when you're missing mana. All this combines allow you to spam the smite even faster. The more you can spam the ability to deal damage, the more you're actually healing as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into some live gameplay. Essentially, all you're looking to do is just spam smite, and you can actually kill enemies before you even see them on their screen, simply just from holding the button down. So if you're somebody that likes builds in which you can hold the button down or macro it, this is a great candidate for you in that manner. Now we have the healing hands converted to a traversal skill, and you can use that to charge around for additional mobility or to dodge any incoming ground effects that might be below you from other enemies. We have javelin as well in this particular build. As mentioned, it's a buff. You can throw it up and then you can charge towards it. While you're within the vicinity of the javelin, you're going to deal additional damage and enemies within it are actually going to be hit by smite roughly every one and a half seconds. Really only need that for higher health rares and bosses. For the general gameplay, you're just going to run around holding smite down. Other ability that we have on the loadout here is going to be Sigils of Hope. And you can preemptively cast this if you're going into a boss or until you're waiting for other enemies to come on your screen. You have plenty of mana and remember, the lower our mana is in regards to our mana pool, the more damage you'll do with this build. So ideally, you want your mana to float at a really low level. Or low percentage, rather, to help clarify that for you. Holy Aura, you very rarely need to use the active ability. You can just have it on the bar for the passive. 
However, through this specialization tree, your holy aura will actually cleanse negative effects on you. So be mindful of that. If you have an effect on you or an ailment that you want to clear, you can always activate that holy aura. You can see its single target damage is certainly lower than its ability to AoE, but overall it has plenty of damage. And since its survivability is so high with such a tremendous amount of self-healing, it's really not an issue to take down bosses either. For the remainder of the slots, look for things that can increase your survivability or your damage output, or ideally it's going to be both. In the case of this chest piece, I'm getting a large amount of health, large amount of attunement, and some additional armor, and like I said, armor is really good for this build. In fact, I stack armor in the chest with the belt, which also grants additional cast speed. Very strong stat for this build. And on the boots, I've got a couple sources of armor as well. Rings, look to get a large amount of resist or even resist that you may be lacking in these spots. It's fairly easy to get good offensive affixes for these because you can benefit from spell damage, lightning damage, you can even get attunement, you can get critical strike chance. There's a lot of stats that you can put here offensively, so look to maximize your defensive capabilities with these rings. This particular helmet I'm running at the moment because I actually just don't have anything better for this build. I believe that a strong exalted would be a better choice, but I'm not ready to part with a 7% increased health and all the armor that this provides. You get 150 from the Aphex and 130 from the Implicit, plus some additional ward, and we do make use of a little bit of ward in this build, but a well-rolled exalted, possibly even with some additional skill lines, Will really benefit this build. In the idle slots, cap your resist first as a priority and then start stacking lightning damage. This is going to give you the most bang for your buck. So make sure that you're stacking that. Again, elemental damage is going to be a part of this build, but lightning damage is going to be the front runner in terms of damage sources. I actually wound up at this build after experimenting with Rive. I was using healing hands to proc on the melee hit and working on a Rive fire build. However, ultimately, this wound up being just as much damage and the range capability. Unfortunately, at this point, range is just so much better than melee, in my opinion at least when you're pushing higher corruption. I'll update the build link whenever possible so you can stay in touch with all the changes that may be made to this build along the way. Also leave screenshots in case the build link site is down or you just want to use them as reference. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.